welcome to the webinar on energy transition and air quality solutions and good practices. This is a third webinar in a webinar series on just tr energy transition in the Western Balkans and Ukraine, kindly brought to you by the Initiative for Coal Regions in Transition in the Western Balkans in Ukraine. Uh, my name is Selma Shefovic, and once again, I'll be your host moderator today. I am happy and thrilled uh, that I'm not alone in this. I have a great team of colleagues helping me in my virtual and actual backstage. Today with me are Irina, Leila, Marina, Margarita, and Francine. Ladies, colleagues, thanks a lot for doing this and being with me on this uh, fantastic interactive journey. A um, couple of rules, as always, housekeeping rules. I'm sure you know them by now, but nonetheless, uh, this webinar is being recorded. It's in view only mode. If you have questions, and I do hope you have questions, please use the chat box function for that. If you prefer to stay anonymous, you can send us your questions um, at the address shown on your screen. Also, if you're experiencing any technical issues, you can use um, that um, same email address. Uh, if you want to use social media to boost the visibility, please use the hashtag shown um, at the slide below. Um, much like last time, we received uh, quite a high number of registrations. And for that, obviously, we are very grateful to all of you. It's a testament that what we are doing is uh, much needed and appreciated. And uh, I'm happy to see that not only so many of you registered, but actually so many of you managed to join us. Last time, uh, we asked you to show with us where you're joining us from, and it seemed to be fun and interactive. So we're gonna repeat this uh, little game, if you will today again, just to get a better sense of your uh, location, especially given um, today's topic. So if you will please use the link shown on the screen or use the QR code and type in where you're joining us from. And then we will get live results, which is also quite exciting for the moderator. Okay, fantastic, Yerevan, wow. Okay, Armenia, okay, wow, fantastic. Okay, wow, this is promising. Yes, thank you so, so much, Poland, yes. Okay, okay, I think I'll wait before I move to the next part because Results so seem to be coming in Norway. Wow. Okay. I think by now we can say that we are trending well uh, all over Europe and even um, further away. Wonderful. Um, last time we also um, did polls with you. This is seems to be an elegant way uh, to bring you in. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I just saw we have someone joining us from Nigeria. Okay, I hope that's true. <laughs> Still, uh, quite fun to see it. Um, someone in the chat says is joining us from Ireland. Well, hello there to you too. Uh, I think now we can um, move to the poll questions. Yes, please. Uh, how would you rate the air quality in your town and city? On a scale one to five, one being poor, five being excellent. Obviously, these are very subjective assessments and uh, I sort of expected the results. Nonetheless, I am sad to see this, but very grateful again that you're participating in this. Much like last time, later at the Q&A session, we'll ask our guests to comment on the results. Thank you, Leila. I think we can move on to the second poll question, which is on the sources of air pollution in your town and city. You can choose up to two answers. And for that, you have 30 to 40 seconds, I'd say. Okay, yeah, transportation.
We have people writing answers in the chat box as well. Transportation, for example, is one of the answers. Yeah. Yeah. This was also within the um, results we expected. Probably because, well, we come from the same region and have, um, I know this firsthand, unfortunately. So yes, thank you, Leila. I think we can uh, close the poll now. We will definitely revert um, to these answers and results later on. For now, we will turn to our guests, our esteemed guests on this uh, super hot topic in the region air quality, or more commonly in the region known as air pollution. Um, I'd say it's a topic, it's a symptom, it's a reflection of our energy efficiency levels, energy poverty, transportation mix, urban design, and whatnot. But also um, a great conversation starter um, for other topics, much broader topics like energy transition and or the climate change. So that's what we are um, trying to talk about today as well, this topic, but in slightly different, uh, with a slightly different objective and the agenda, how the coal regions in transition can um, benefit from these best practices from the other, other coal regions uh, that went through the transition and make most of it. Today with us, Joining us from Vienna is Peter Baida, senior environmental expert working for the Energy Community Secretariat. But even before he joined the Energy Community Secretariat, Peter was active in the environment. He worked at the National Environmental Agency in Budapest, as well as European Commission's DG for Environment. In his current role as a senior environmental expert, his main activities involve monitoring the implementation of the energy community a key on the environment and supporting their transition. So Peter will kindly set a scene for um, discussion we'll later have with our other two guests. Peter, over to you. And obviously, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you very much, uh, Selma. Quick sound check if everything is all right and you hear me, thank you. So thank you and uh, welcome also to all participants uh, from, from my side, from the uh, Energy Community Secretariat side. As you see also uh, at the bottom, the Secretariat is one of the, um, the principles of the um, Corrigence and Transition Initiative. So in that capacity, uh, I'm here. And also apart from what Selma has mentioned kindly in her introduction, I'm also responsible for an initiative that I will also present at the end of uh, my slides, that's the Clean Air Regions Initiative. And uh, I'm very happy uh, that also actually one of the participating municipalities is represented at today's panel uh, by Emilia, the speaker after me. So please, uh, if we can have the, the first slide. Thank you. Um, I'm quite sure that actually many of the participants uh, have also seen that um, um, the European Environment Agency has uh, just published uh, this week the Europe's air quality status report. So the, the report on the, based on the most recent uh, air quality data. This is an annual report that the Environment Agency in Copenhagen uh, always uh, publishes. And I just... Um, brought a quote uh, from it, where they say that air pollution is the largest environmental health risk in Europe, causing cardiovascular and respiratory diseases that lead to the loss of health years of life, and in the worst cases, to preventable deaths. So it is still a, a pressing uh, policy issue um, in the European Union as such, and if we go uh, to the to the Western Balkans and Ukraine as the origins uh, and transition initiatives, geographical coverage, which largely overlaps also with the uh, energy communities, geographical um, scope, then this is uh, even more true. From this report, uh, we can also see that the geographical focus, especially of dust pollution, so particulate matter pollution, PM 2.5 and PM 10, is on Central and Eastern Europe and on Italy. 
in Italy, it's predominantly the Po Valley, so north of Italy, for uh, a number of um, geographical and uh, economical reasons with the presence of heavy industry in the region. As we have also seen uh, in, the, in the second poll where the participants were giving uh, their, their replies on what is the main problem in their own uh, cities, in their own vicinities uh, of air pollution, we have seen that transport came up as first, household second, and on the imaginary bronze medal went uh, almost one-on-one, uh, -on -one, it was 35 to 33%. Uh, the electricity and heat generation and industry. And if we actually think a bit of it, uh, it's um, indeed almost the same thing because electricity and heat generation is also type of an industry. It's the energy industry, actually. And also this uh, EEA report says that the use of solid fuels uh, for domestic heating and industry, they are the main concerns when it comes to particulate matter pollution. Of course, if we would focus on other pollutants like nitrogen oxides, then the transport sector would immediately also kick in. That was also showing up on the polls. Next slide, please. So this is uh, how it looks uh, presented on a map. So you can see that um, the north of Europe with some uh, notable exceptions and uh, Western Europe largely is within the, the limit values for, for air quality. Um, and when it comes to, to the eastern and uh, to the southern part of Europe, especially southeast uh, Europe, then you, you see more and more orange and uh, red dots. The, um, the um, Po Valley, so the north of Italy, is also showing up um, predominantly uh, on, on the map. And also, if we take a look at the at the Western Balkans uh, region, there you can also see almost exclusively um, orange and uh, red dots. Albania uh, is uh, missing from from this analysis because uh, there is no data submitted by them, as well as this is the case for Ukraine. Next slide, please. Now, this is basically the same information, but presented somehow differently. Uh, this is also a um, country-based comparison based on the 2021 validated data. So this is already final uh, air quality data. And then um, this is like the top of the list is the, let's say the country with the best air quality. Here we of course also can see geograph geographical factors affecting largely this data set. So Finland, of course, with the uh, abundant uh, areas um, is, of course, much better positioned than other countries that are lower on the list. And if you look at um, Western Balkans region, so energy community contracting parties, unfortunately, they are pretty much uh, at, the, at the bottom of the list. So this is kind of like a, uh, a scientifically based confirmation of the reality that, um, that many, many participants also experience on a daily basis. Next slide, please. So I'm now coming to the to the Clean Air Regions Initiative uh, in the framework of the of the energy community. This is a rather new initiative. Uh, it was signed in 2021 uh, in the framework of the Just Transition Forum uh, by ambitious mayors of municipalities. Uh, and also they have recognized the pressing need to tackle air pollution on the basis of their own experience in their own municipalities. The focus of the initiative is uh, the development, the adoption and the maintenance of uh, local air quality plans. And uh, um, I think Emilia will also um, talk a bit about uh, their particular experience in Bitola. There are also 10 other municipalities from five contracting parties in total. Korcha from Albania, six municipalities from Bosnia and Herzegovina, Banovici, Kaka in Lukovac, Smaglai, Tuzla and Živinice. Uh, from Montenegro, Kievi and Podgorica decided to sign up. Um, I already mentioned Bitola from North Macedonia and Niš and Novi Sad from Serbia who are participating in this uh, initiative. There is also a sharing experience uh, dimension in this initiative, similar to the co regions in transition, but more focused on the air quality uh, dimension. And uh, also, I just wanted to uh, um, refer to the next phase to the initiative that we are currently working on. 
uh, in the Energy Committee Secretary to design the next phase of the initiative, which would be rather focusing on, on projects and measures, so implementation of uh, measures. Um, and that would be um, at the uh, announced at the next Just Transition Forum that is to be taking place uh, in September this year. I would also like to, to invite everybody, um, if you're interested, to, to join us at the Just Transition Forum. Um, more information will be will be coming later on. So thanks once again for uh, for having us at uh, today's webinar. I'm sure that we will have an interesting discussion, and I'm ready for questions later on. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Peter, thank you so much also for sticking to the time. Um, just to confirm, uh, the EEA report you were referring to covers also Serbia, Montenegro, and Kosovo, right? Uh, yes, indeed. So actually, um, this uh, includes information and data from all countries that are submitting airport data to the EEA. Mm -hmm. uh, so apart from Albania, um, all all the other five WB6 countries are, are covered. Oh, yeah. Not oh. not to the same level of detail than than EU member states, but uh, but there is information as well. Okay. Well, okay. Also, thank you for commenting our poll result. In fact, I was going to ask you to do that later, but yeah, nice, nice, nice job on being uh, proactive. And yeah, what a vivid uh, chart. I don't know whether to feel um, ashamed or scared uh, or, or something else, but fortunately, uh, our second part of this webinar, we have uh, the, the solution and best practices that will hopefully alleviate these um, jittery feelings that I have. Have, um, around the topics. So today with us, joining us from Poland is Ms. Marta Bavic. Hello, Marta. Good to see you again. Uh, Marta is an environmental and energy policies expert with almost 20 years um, of experience. Since 2020, she is in charge of the EU funds programming and institutional cooperation at the National Fund for Environment Protection and water management, the Polish largest green investments implementing agencies. Okay, wow. So, Marta, it's been a while. It's a pleasure seeing you again. Uh, please do dazzle us with your um, fantastic English and I'm sure what will be um, a fantastic and impressive presentation on uh, the work that the Poland has done in this regard. Over to you. Thank you, uh, Selma. I must admit that uh, Peter um, did a great job um, as providing splendid introduction to my presentation, as not only the Western Balkans countries um, have been uh, pointed out as those um, uh, suffering from poor air quality, but Poland uh, has been teamed up in that group and Yes, indeed, um, um, you could perfectly see it on the map um, of uh, Europe, of the air quality map. Unfortunately, we are a country where uh, coal is a dominant source of uh, heating in residential buildings, in particular in single um, family housing. And that caused a huge problem with air quality. Um, um, we have been named and shamed by the EU agencies uh, back in 2018. And that was the uh, break um, even point where we decided uh, to um, um, tackle the problem. Um, I am representing an institution that has been active for over 30 years in Poland. Um, on the next slide, you will um, um, see uh, what is the overall amount of funds we have distributed over the last three decades. And um, uh, we have started from granting uh, funds to enterprises, to local government, to public administration, to NGOs. And these has been our focal focus groups for the first 30 years of our existence. But in 2018, we have um, realized that we won't be able to handle the problem of 
uh, air pollution all over Poland because when it comes to air pollution from coal burning, we could say that the Poland as a whole is a coal region and uh, each and every region of Poland um, faces problems with insufficient air quality. So um, in 2018, we decided to be bold and to experiment and to try to reach a um, group of beneficiaries that we have never worked before. And these has been individual households. Uh, on the next slide, um, I would like to give you a brief um, on the most challenging uh, program we have ever designed and we have ever implemented. Um, and the name of it is CLEAR. It's CLEAR Air program uh, where we um, devoted um, uh, or planned over 100 billion Polish lotus, approximately 23 billion euro, uh, including EU sources uh, to help individuals in Poland, individual households, um, to fight for improved air quality um, and reduce greenhouse gases emissions. Um, and what we feel is absolutely uh, necessary here is um, replacing heat sources in individual houses in Poland and thermal modernization of those to make sure that not only um, the uh, heat in, in residential buildings is being produced in climate neutral way, but also that each and every house needs less energy to be effectively heated. Uh, this is a huge challenge since we evaluated that there's almost 3 billion individual households in need of such investments. Um, and we decided to start uh, and to reach those households um, that are also um, uh, significantly touched by the problem of energy poverty, namely those with the lowest uh, levels of yearly and monthly income. Um, and so we established that uh, level in Poland um, at approximately 100,135 today, thousands Polish lotus yearly, that's approximately 29,000 euro. Um, we have decided that first time in history of, uh, of our organization, we would reach individuals. Um, on the next slide, there's an example how we try to explain in very visual way um, what are the benefits of such investments and what are the monetary uh, values of the grants that we offer. On the next slide, you'll be able to see the overall outcomes of the program to date. Uh, we have managed to reach 580,000 individual households over the last four years. Uh, they have asked us uh, for grants amounting to 12 billion as lot as it's more or less 2.6 billion euro. And we have managed to assess and positively respond to over 360,000 of those and distribute 4.9 billion slotters. And these include also renewables um, as alternative new source of heating uh, for a household. And uh, you can also see the statistics as the interest of even the lowest income uh, households in Poland grows when it comes to PV panels and purely zero emission uh, sources of energy. Uh, the greatest compliment ever is the fact that the European Commission decided to co-finance the program um, and we do have uh, EU financing in place. On the next slide, I would like to briefly show you the uh, parallel program that we decided to launch uh, a year after we have started with Clean Air Priority Program as we felt that there's probably not only potential in the lowest level income uh, single family buildings in Poland, but also that the medium and higher level income households would be willing to contribute to the fight for clean air 
um, and the benefits of energy transition. So we have um, offered um, a seed money, a little grant um, uh, to each and every individual in Poland uh, willing to invest in PV panels on his or her rooftop or his or her uh, lawn uh, in front of the uh, single family building. We have started with um, 1 billion Polish slotters um, budget, but yet again, the program um, turned out to be such a success that yet again, European Commission um, was willing to uh, continue financing the program. And today we are providing the grants from the EU money. We do not know how long we are going to continue the program because we do realize that at some point, the saturation of individual PV panels and prosumer energy in the Polish system will be sufficient. We don't know yet when, but what we offered was um, um, uh, to allow people uh, willing to invest in um, a PV installation of from two to 10 kilowatt power. This is what we assume is enough for the uh, individual household needs in Poland. And yet again, thousands of people all over Poland decided to go for it. On the next slide, you will see the overall results and what we have um, found here that among the over 400,000 um, households that decided to join the program, um, the very leaders have been those regions in Poland that are in fact co-regions. Um, those are um, uh, the ones in the south uh, west part of Poland and the central Poland and First time ever we have seen that correlation uh, of popularity of that program of willingness of uh, individuals to invest in PV panels with how strongly the region uh, has been uh, dependent on coal and mining to date. On the very next slide, I would like to give you a um, brief on how the programs evaluated and how they um, developed um, during uh, the last four or five years. These are the uh, living organisms. We, for example, looking at the PV panels market, try to make sure that the seed money we offer reflects the real situation on the market. We have started from 5,000 slotters, approximately 1,000 euro uh, four years ago, then we observed how the uh, prices of PV panels dropped. So we also brought down the seed money grant offered, but due to the uh, energy crisis in Europe this year uh, and absolute surge of um, uh, needs in terms of PV panels installations and their rapid uh, increase uh, when it comes to prices, we decided to double uh, the grant. And also all the time we have proposed to our uh, beneficiaries, to Polish um, households, uh, all sorts of additional grants for the um, installations like energy management system of, or energy storage uh, to enable them consume even more energy uh, within the households. Um, and yet again, under the both programs, we have seen immense popularity and activity in core regions. And we have a feeling that first time in history, we managed to reach masses of Polish people and show them on their personal um, uh, examples and their personal uh, household um, um, experience that energy transition pays off uh, that it is beneficial not only for the governments and big companies to take part in energy transition, but also you can see um, uh, very imminent benefits in terms of your um, uh, energy bills and in terms of the air you are breathing on the spot also in the uh, core region. So 
we have seen the whole Poland as co-region here, but at the end, it turned out that we had managed to uh, activate masses of people within the core regions under the, both of those programs. So um, keep my fingers crossed that, that some of these experiences would be inspiring for others um, facing similar problems. Thank you. Wow, Marta, I, I knew it that you know you would be um, amazing, but seriously, from naming and shaming to what being some sort of a champions in this, <laughs> fantastic indeed. Uh, you know, in, impressive figures out there from the numbers of um, households you managed to reach to numbers of uh, changes you managed, uh, figures you managed to um, on installations you managed to do on year on year basis. And also how wonderful it was that uh, you simplified your procedures and going from paper to electronic. That must have been motivating and inviting, right? But we can discuss that um, later on. Um, I'm happy to see that uh, questions are coming in, including from you, Peter. Thank you so much. This was definitely not agreed on, but you know we are uh, very much open for this. Uh, Marta, the question is for you. So you, while I turn to our next speaker, you can uh, ponder on it. Uh, our next guest speaker is uh, someone much closer to me, to home. Uh, Emilia Saravska is joining us from North Macedonia. She's an advisor for energy, energy efficiency, and renewable energy sources uh, within the municipality of Pitola, North Macedonia. In this role, Emilia focuses on the preparation and coordination of projects in the field of energy efficiency, as well as on collaboration with uh, other municipalities on this topic. She participates in the preparation and implementation of the Just Transition Diagnostic, in North Macedonia, as well as in a wide number of projects and initiatives on just transition. Emilia is also a um, guest lecturer at the Faculty of Technical Sciences of the Bitola University. Emilia, good to see you, welcome. And please share with us what is it that municipality of Bitola is doing uh, in tackling air pollution while going through the energy transition. Thank you very much, Selma. I think everything is fine with the voice, with the, okay, everything's fine. I hope so. Uh, good afternoon, and pleased that I'm a part of this uh, webinar series, Just uh, Energy Transition in the Western Balkan in Ukraine, especially for this topic about energy efficiency and air pollution. And uh, I hope that we will have a good period today. Uh, my presentation is uh, just transition as a chance for the development of the Bitola region. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I will say some, uh, some uh, words about uh, my municipality. The municipality of Bitola is the biggest local authority in the cross-border area of our country is located in the southwestern part of North, of North Macedonia, the Pelagonia Valley, surrounded by Baba, Nije, and Kaimakchalan mountains. We are only 13 kilometers from the Greece border. The city stands an important junction connecting with the south of uh, Adriatic Sea and the Aegean Sea and Central Europe. As and is an administrative, cultural, industrial, commercial, and uh, educational center. Bitola is the economic and industrial center of southwestern part of the country, and many of the factories and companies in the country are based in the city. Near the city, only of on uh, 12 kilometer are the three blocks of the thermal power plant, Regbitol, I can see on uh, this photo here. The largest producer of electricity, about 70% of the electricity for the needs of our country is produced here in uh, thermal power plant, Regbitol. Next slide, please. Commitments and uh, activities of our municipality in the energy efficiency process. 
the energy efficient uh, energy transition in Europe is an inevitable process that includes our country, of course, and. Uh, in, accord in accordance with such commitments at the state level, local self-government units have a significant role in this transition process. The municipality of Vitola in, in the last year of a pronounced energy crisis has been working on several projects that enable energy efficiency from several aspects. Work is being done in public buildings, especially schools and kindergartens, where the greatest need for energy efficiency is felt. This is also on public enterprises. The municipality works to raise public awareness on energy conversation, supports the business sector, and for the first time last year, through subsidies, uh, we have uh, private residential buildings had the opportunity to renovate the facades in order to do something new for energy efficiency, of course, and we are planning to do the same this year. For this uh, purpose, the municipality of Bitola provided 5,000 uh, euros. Also this year, we have subsidies for air conditioners and bicycles, and the municipality budget for this year is over than 10 million dinners. It's approximately about 174,000 euros for the environment program. Uh, at the same time, the municipality is a part of a just transition process, uh, as well as several international projects also to which the exchange of experiences, involvement in the tr uh, transition process, energy efficiency and living uh, access to certain funds intended for uh, support implementation of projects from uh, this area. Next slide, please. Uh, for us as a municipality, it's very important to be more involved in the process. Uh, when we discuss about the just transition process, the involvement of the municipality of Bito has been from the very beginning of this process in our country. When those in charge for implementation of this project requested that the needs of uh, municipality be detected in order to take and to, to taking in them into account during the preparation of the action plan. But uh, several steps are required. Greater uh, involvement of the local self-government to take into account the needs of the municipality, of course, because decisions in the just transition process are made uh, at the state level. But in uh, essence, uh, is it the local government that faces the problems in our reality? Therefore, the just transition should and must first start from needs of the local community, especially from the needs of the municipality of Bitola as a coal region, of course, to recognize the concisions and provide essential benefits of the transition to a green economy and uh, with special support to the risk categories in the process, above all on the financial plan. That's maybe most important. Uh, allocation of funds does not only mean investing uh, in transition from coal to renewable energy sources, that means investing in infrastructure, water, agriculture, and etc. I will give you one example. Hundreds of trucks uh, carrying coal from uh, Ahlada mine in Nimbor in Greece to Red Bitola every day because the coal in uh, Subodol mine here uh, near Bitola, near the Red near Rek Bitola is no longer with a good quality. That means uh, additional air pollution from hundreds of trucks damaged to roads and no one pay anything for, for that. From Rek Bitola, we have soil and water pollution also, which means that the protection of agricultural products and water should be also taken in uh, this uh, account. On the this slide, when I talk about money, uh, you can see that EU will spend 100 billion 
for just transition process, process. But as you know, Macedonia is not in EU. Some time ago, several days ago, the government said that about 40 million uh, euros will be allocated for just transition process in Macedonia. And for us in uh, Bitola, it's very important that they are properly distributed. Next slide, please. Uh, when we discuss about the transition process, we can speak also about the fear uh, between the, our citizens. The transition does not only affect the employees of, of certain factory. When I speak a factory, I think about uh, Rek Bitola, but affect all residents of the municipality of Bitola in a different way, like I mentioned before. In the coming period, is it clear that the employees of Reguitela will have to have some requalification of skills, depending on which model of transformation will be chosen for this thermal power plant in the decarbonization process? Uh, hence, uh, timely information for the citizens and the residents uh, in municipality is very significant in order to indicate that it's the process of transition and uh, not process of lost jobs. It certainly means uh, new development of industrial branches, a new uh, involvement of municipality, which will be the most affected by the process. At timely information is a key to a good process of transition. Is it important to choose a scenario according to which the transition would uh, take place, taking into account the needs of the local population at the same time, take measures to protect the environment, especially in the area of uh, electricity production, and at the same time, significantly invest in our municipality. Next slide, please. Also on, the, on this uh, photo, you can see, uh, excuse me, uh, if I, uh, I can explain um, the slide before about the pollution. Uh, yes, this is, you can see, this is uh, from the top of our city and you can see the pollution here around the Rek Bitola. And uh, maybe when it's windy, it's clear. And uh, this is a almost everyday situation near Bitola, as I can, and can see from this photo. Next slide, please. Uh, like I mentioned, municipality of Vitola is a part of the initiative for coal region in transition in the Western Balkans and Ukraine. And uh, the main goal from this initiative is uh, to perspective the possibility of comparison, cooperation and utilization of positive experience from the region. Exchange program for coal region in transition pairing uh, North Macedonia and Greece at the first, first exchange, which took uh, took uh, place in July 22 in uh, Bitola. Experience from the implementation of the just transition process in Greece were exchanged through presentation and discussion between us, which were their first step and where they are now. Of course, they are much uh, longer in this process than we are. On the Macedonian side, the holder of the project is MANU, Macedonian Academy for Science and Arts, together with the representatives of uh, the affected uh, municipality, Bitola and Kicheva, as well as the employees of Rek Bitola and uh, Rek Oslome. Uh, we visited Svodol mine in Bitola, as you can see in the first uh, picture and Rek Bitola, and uh, received information about the current operation uh, of the thermal plan, uh, thermal power plant. At the second exchange in Greece uh, in October 2022, we again discussed the various impacts of the just transition process in all areas, as well as the involvement of the business sector. We visited the Ahlada mine, that's on the last photo. Uh, where they confirm it to us then that now they mostly work for Rek Bitola and for Rek Oslomi. However, we concluded that we are not entering in the process of a just transition at the same level 
unfortunately, manufacturers financial support from EU. As a member of EU, you can see uh, from 21 to 27, Greece will receive 1.3 billion uh, euros. Also, for example, the two thermal plants uh, in North Macedonia and in Greece, as well the as well as uh, the mines Sugodol and Ahlada, uh, are in the same valley. Next slide, please. As Peter mentioned before, municipality of Bitola is the only representative from North Macedonia in the CARI initiative. And this initiative is uh, initiated by the Secretariat of the Energy Community for the supporting of Greece Center of the Western Balkans. The aim is to encourage regions uh, and communities of, uh, of the contracting parties to take action in the field of air quality. Uh, on a voluntary basis to achieve improvements by introduction measures to reduce air pollution. And uh, we have a lot of benefits uh, for this initiative. I will mention some of them. Uh, benefits uh, are significant above all because it comes from the mayor themselves who are aware that uh, there is uh, air pollution in their cities and something must be done about it. And also important is the exchange of experience in the coal region of the Western Balkans and how certain cities deal with the air pollution problems. A lot can be learned and sometimes the experiences from the other uh, countries and cities can be applied in order to arrive the best possible solution for our city and also for our country. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, when we discuss about the air pollution, the municipality of Bitola has a new five-year plan for ambient air quality. Uh, we developed, like I said, new, uh, new five-year plan and uh, for ambient uh, air, which is planned uh, to implement specific measures and procedures that will reduce pollution and, uh, of course, uh, improve the state of, uh, for the environment. The series of measures that we have foreseen in the annual program of uh, the municipality will give positive effects, uh, both on reducing the emission of harmful gases in the air and uh, on raising public awarenesses. We are planning several types of support, such as subsidies for purchase, bicycles, um, subsidies for cleaning chimneys and other projects that are um, in our program. And uh, we have in Bitola two measure station from the Ministry of uh, Environment, uh, one placed in the city center uh, of Bitola and the other one in the industrial zone. They measured PM10, PM2.5, uh, sulfur, etc. And we have 12 uh, measure station from early. Also, they have been installed in our city, but soon some of them will stop working because uh, unfortunately there is no one to pay for them to continue working. So this is uh, some kind of uh, situation that we have in our city on a plan of energy efficiency and uh, uh, about the air pollution. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Uh, you know, I, I I wrote down so many points I wanted to uh, comment on, but I, I don't think I'll have enough time for that. Uh, what I just thought of is that um, in one of our earlier um, webinars, one of your fellow North Macedonians, um, Mr. Timo Alexev, made a comment about uh, professionals and highly capable people in North Macedonia with a lots of enthusiasm who can uh, work on the energy transition. Um, I'm sure he meant you uh, when he uh, made that comment. And uh, yeah, I think all of us today can see uh, why uh, with, with so many um, actions and initiatives uh, you're doing there. Um, 
on the points that I wrote, uh, by all means, thank you for mentioning that this has to be a bottom-up uh, approach, the energy transition. Thank you for stressing that. And also uh, the importance and value of exchanges that um, CARI initiative offers, but also the initiative for coal regions in transition, because ultimately none of us here is reinventing the wheels. We, we can just ultimately copy paste uh, best experiences. And my last point, um, which uh, actually I should have mentioned in the beginning, but you reminded me with your comment on the wind, um, is actually that when it comes to air pollution in this area, in Bosnia anyways, it seems to me that we are only discussing it in the media during the hot season, you know, November through say February or March, when in fact uh, it, it, it needs to be out there in a public discourse and media much more often. And I think that the fact that the um, initiative uh, is has this webinar today out of season, so to say, and with, with nearly 70 people with us online is, um, is a good example and uh, that uh, how to do and how to keep this topic um, relevant outside the, the, the season, so to say. Uh, we have a couple of questions. Uh, we have um, around 10 to 20 minutes if needed for the Q&A part. So if you could kindly please keep it uh, short, that, that way we would be able to answer uh, most of the questions. Um, like I said, um, I suggest we start with commenting of the poll results. Peter, thank you, you did uh, your part. So Marta, Emilia, this is for you. Any comments um, on this first poll question? Were you surprised? To hear no. this, see this? No, we are not surprised. I, I mean, I'm not surprised because unfortunately I don't live in the city and I can't uh, take five to say excellent air quality in our city is excellent, unfortunately. What do you think, Marta? Well, I wasn't surprised either since if that was a poll um, all over Poland, um, uh, the answers would be even more bitter. Majority of Polish people consider air quality in their surroundings poor. Okay. Okay, what about the second poll question on sources of pollution? Transportation I may start. In Poland, it's definitely household heating. Um, transportation only in big cities, um, so it would be another way around, mm -hmm. but I guess this is due to um, highly ambitious EU regulations when mm -hmm. it comes to transport that Poland as the EU member needs to follow, so we were able to tackle that problem, air pollution from transportation, um, sooner um, than the household heating. Right, and I and I think if I may jump in uh, on on that on that point, uh, it is also a fact that we just uh, cannot ignore that uh, these tightening uh, ever tightening regulations in the EU that Marta was referring to is also kind of an export driver of used cars uh, to to the to the region uh, where we are working at. So this is an unfortunate yet very much existing phenomenon. It also exists uh, within the EU. So uh, if um, I mean I live in Vienna, uh, I go often uh, towards the east uh, to my home country Hungary, and there you can also see these uh, trailers uh, of used cars taking uh, cars from predominantly Germany or Austria towards uh, Romania, Bulgaria, beyond. Um, so that, of course, has its um, effect and toll, unfortunately, on the air quality. And unfortunately, not just related to NOx emissions, um, because usually it's nitrogen oxides that is transport related. But if, if you talk about old cars, then of course also um, PM, uh, could also be a problem, and especially all diesel cars, and especially diesel gate, and all the related uh, problems uh, 
are pushing the the diesel engine cars uh, more and more in the not just the used market as such, but on the secondary used market. So like extra EU exports. Thank you, Peter, for that intervention and clarification also. Uh, I see that Marta, you already answered to Peter's question, if I'm right. Thank you uh, for that as well. Uh, we have a question from, oh, I'm sorry, Emilia, uh, I forgot. Would you like to comment on transportation as a source? Yes, uh, I think that is, trucks? yes, it is uh, maybe a first, uh, first uh, sources for air pollution in our city also. But uh, here is a household heating and uh, coal mining in our situation in Bitola. Right, yes. Very, very relatable. Um, there are questions on finances, but before we, um, before I ask you those, um, maybe uh, Peter, you or Marta could answer a question from Samir Lemesh, who is joining us from Bosnia. I have a privilege of knowing him and being very grateful for his all of his um, activism in this area. Uh, his question, well, first of all, he congratulated to Poland, yes, that too, but his question is on um, the reduction of PM particles, I assume, after these measures um, were implemented, not as per the latest EEA report, which I'm sure he um, has read or will. Thank you for that question. Uh, unfortunately, we have reached only about 20% of the households that are polluting um, uh, in Poland uh, due to inefficient uh, old heat source. Um, and we cannot see today a strong correlation between the success of the program and the improvement of um, air quality in case of PMs. Uh, but we expect that it's going to be clearly visible when we read approximately 40% of the households. And already now we see that in winter seasons, when the temperatures are mild, uh, you can um, see that improvement. But if uh, the winter is really strong, then the remaining 80% of still untackled uh, Polish households are indeed still polluting uh, um, um, heavily. But we do plan to uh, continue with the program until 2029. We do have financial support from the EU. So we do believe that uh, we are heading there, even though we are not there yet. Much, much uh, closer. Um, and now the question on finances. Um, Whoever wants to answer it, please go ahead. And the reason I'm asking is because it seems to be recurring one, you know, from your presentations, from also in the past webinars, but also a question that um, audience has been asking. Obviously, it, it, it's very relevant, and uh, I'd appreciate if any of you could uh, comment on this uh, question of about um, 100 million in funds that um, was asked and, uh, okay, sorry, I um, just need to look at it in the, in the chat box. Yeah. So, okay, sorry about this. Uh, I, I could yeah, share thanks. how we did it in Poland. Yes. Sorry, um, I was just looking for the name of the gentleman who asked it, Gora Nikolovsky. Yeah, just to make it a person. Yes, sure. Are secured 100 million euros for just transition in municipality of Bitola. So the question is for uh, you, Emilia, please. But uh, Marta, by all means, share some of your experience with us as well. No, no, no. As I said, the government mentioned that they took uh, 40 million euros from just transition program. But uh, as I mentioned uh, that uh, like a municipality uh, in our uh, annual program, environmental program, we have uh, 174,000 euros for um, projects for uh, air pollutions and for air quality. 
my stuff. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, but th these are concrete numbers and uh, very direct sources. Um, what we did in Poland um, is that 30 years ago, we decided to fine each and every entrepreneur that is being polluting water or air. And it's compulsory in Poland that if you produce some sewage or some gas fumes, um, and they enter Polish waters or Polish uh, air, you need to pay a fee. Uh, and we have been collecting these fees for 30 years. And we have managed to gather that seed money for the investments. Um, and as the seed money become insufficient, we look for international financial institutions willing to join in. And the European Commission is one of those, but for example, the World Bank also um, um, offers to contribute. So we use our own domestically collected environmental fees uh, to start off a program and to prove that it works in our domestic um, situation and then we look outside to find um, a big financing source from an international financial organization. Okay, seems like a um, well-developed scheme. Um, maybe one last question um, because it's coming um, from North Macedonia for Amelia. Um, so Nevena Smilevska from Bankwatch is asking, is there any other industry in or near Bitola that can be considered a source of air pollution? And related to uh, that is um, her comment. She understands that the Bitola household heating and transportation are major sources, just like we um, mentioned, but would it intervention um, or change of other industries in terms of fuel, change in terms of fuel, have a significant effect on air quality? Of course, there is a lot of factories near Bitola, and of course, they uh, have uh, uh, I, uh, their pollution there, of course, but um, we start to think about the uh, situation uh, in a different way because we are near the project of uh, gasification, liquefaction, and some other stuff who will uh, help us to, to reduce air pollution. Uh, of course, when I, when I speak about transport, uh, that means the, um, Peter explain everything about our cars here. So that's why the transport is maybe one of the most uh, uh, air pollutions here in our city. And uh, as we discussed before, uh, a lot of houses here, they use wood heating mm. and also CO2 is uh, a very, very, um, very bad for our city. Uh, that's why I said that uh, there are uh, uh, most important uh, uh, things to do in our city, but we can do much more. And of course, with a lot of measures uh, for industry, uh, we can do uh, something for better uh, air quality here in our region. I'm sure you will, if, if what have you done so far is any indication, I'm sure you will. That's why I mentioned, I'm sorry, that's why I mentioned uh, gasification and amplification, some of the death factories in, in mm -hmm. industrial zone. Mm -hmm. They will uh, use gas and uh, topification, so it will be much more better for air pollution in uh, this uh, part of Bitola. Yeah, that, I think that's a key key phrase. Much better, but uh, not, maybe not for really two or three years from now. But it will be. Yeah, let's let's wait and see if some other other technologies can uh, live up to that challenge. Um, any last comments from your side? You're welcome to give them now to close up this. Otherwise very engaging um, webinar with so many um, questions again. Thank you so much to the audience, I might as well say. So, Peter, Marta, Emilia, 
this is the moment if you want to say something if not that's completely fine you said uh enough um okay i think that that's uh that, that's an answer um okay then um i have a few things to say as always at the end it's mostly about the um, uh, outlook of the webinar series there are three more in this um, webinar series, the next one is on May 25th, and it will be on opportunities to finance energy transitions. Uh, if you haven't registered already, please do so. Um, on, on a personal note, uh, this is rather bittersweet uh, goodbye, because as of your next webinar, your host moderator will be uh, wonderful Sonia Ristesca, who I'm sure you all know. So from my side, a massive thank you to all the speakers. It's been a pleasure uh, listening to you, learning from you, definitely. Uh, and if, if anything from you, taking away from your enthusiasm. As always to the audience, like I said, at one point we had um, 70 or even over 70 people joining us uh, to discuss this out of season uh, topic. Um, I really hope to see you elsewhere, uh, whether in person or online. Until then, uh, from the FES team, my colleague Francie and myself, a huge thank you and goodbye to everyone. Thank you for having us. Bye to everyone. Thank you, Selma. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.